Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Armenia and Azerbaijan in conflict. So this is a developing and breaking story. And we're looking at the Nagorno-Karabakh region. And follow the cursor, that's this area. Right here in the south central part between Armenia and Azerbaijan between the Caspian and the Black Sea. It's in the Caucasus. So military conflict has broken out between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the weekend, and the situation appears to be escalating quickly. Both countries have declared martial law. Both sides are leaking information about war declarations. Now, they haven't come out and said, hey, we're this is an official war declaration, but they're talking with their parliaments and saying, you know what, we're going to declare war, and when we declare war, it'll be official. And that's kind of the company line out of both these countries. Armenia has called for troop mobilization, and Armenia is claiming they are responding to the Azerbaijan initiation. Now, the one thing with Armenia, they are asking people, I've seen this some on Twitter, so take it or leave it, uh, they are asking all able-bodied men, 55 and younger, call to arms, for the for the homeland so um 55 and younger if you're able time to go to war civilian and military casualties are being reported on both sides military equipment munitions and air force equipment are being destroyed on both sides you can go to youtube you can go to twitter and there are plenty of videos of watching tanks get blown up bodies lying dead in ditches, helicopters getting shot down. Both sides are taken to social media to show the destruction of the other one. Got a couple of articles. There's more uh, since this was originally posted, but the first first two I saw was Al-Mazdar News. Armenia declares martial law and mass mobilization after clashes with Azerbaijan. And RT.com, Azerbaijan, Armenia, martial law. Now we'll get into RT. That's Russia Times. I know some of you guys will say, hey, there's a bias there. Yes, there probably is. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But the following is from the Facebook page of Nikol Pashinyan, and he is the prime minister of Ar Armenia. You can click on his link and you can see this stuff for yourself. But here's the, the statement he made. Dear compatriots, now by the decision of the government, a military situation and a general military gathering is announced in the Republic of Armenia. The decision will take effect from the moment of publication. I urge the staff attached to the troops to present their territorial military commissions for the sake of the homeland, for the sake of victory. Uh, and when you look at his Facebook page, he's... It's a call to arms. That's not just the only thing he's posted. He's making a case. Um, and here's his Twitter. Uh, this is the official page from the art from the country of Armenia. And again, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, we're united as always, as we have been in all crucial moments of our history when enemy has threatened our existence, our identity, and our values. Dictatorial authorities of Azerbaijan must know that it's impossible to bring Armenian people to their knees. Now, you can hear his comments in their native language. It's not in English. Uh, I have no idea what he's saying. But thanks to Google Translate, if we trust that, we get some sort of idea what's going on. I am going to show video of the mobilization of these forces. Um, and I would also recommend that you turn on the sound and listen to the music. I mean, it's, it's ominous and it's like, it's serious, but you can see there's no shortage of men signing up to go to, to go to war. And you can see the ages of these people. They're young. You see some probably in their early twenties, late teens. And then, you know, that fellow there, he's probably in his forties or fifties, both of them. I don't know what his role is going to be. I think some of these people are going to need to get in shape pretty quick. But that guy's not a young fellow either. And they're ready to go. Um, and this goes on for about, what, about a minute 45. It's got music as the backdrop. I'll let you all listen to this. But then they're going to, I'm not going to go all the way through it. But it's nothing but buses taking off. Bus loads of people taking off. 
uh, getting ready to go fight. And that's, that's the Armenian side of this. Now, <laughs> a little bit different tact with Azerbaijan. They're shutting down social media. And there are tweets showing truckloads of Syrian and Muslim mercenaries headed to the region. And on Twitter, the foreign minister of Azerbaijan is making phone calls with Turkey, Russia, and the European Union. So it's a picture of him and like the counterpart from Turkey, the counterpart from Russia. And they're both holding phones. No content about what's being said between the two of them. And then there's a lot of pictures of guys sitting around with ta- at the table, like they're discussing something or having a meeting with notepads and they got their masks on. And again, no, no content or detail about what's being discussed. It just shows, Hey, we're, we're talking about it and we're calling people. Um, no real detail. Like, like Armenia is willing to say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. Now, Azerbaijan has said, yep. Uh, we're ready to declare war too. And we have martial law too. So there, there's that part of it. Uh, there are religious implications. Azerbaijan is viewed as a secular country by the Muslim world. And nearly a quarter of the population identifies itself as Muslim. So I think it's about 22% from what I'd seen on various websites, Wikipedia, etc. They estimate 22% of the people identify themselves as Muslim. Of that group, Azerbaijan is mostly Shia. So 85% of that 22% identify themselves as Shia Muslims. So these are the more fundamental, um, believe in a Sharia interpretation, a, you know, a, a very conservative interpretation of Sharia law. These would be the hardliners. So they would, they would identify probably with Iran and, um, those folks, you know, also reaching into Iraq, a lot of Shia, that's who they identify as those people who are Muslims. Armenia is predominantly is a predominantly Christian nation. Again, this is a 2011, according to Wikipedia, 97% of the country identified as Christian and members of the Armenian Apostolic Church. So we do have a Muslim v. Christian situation in the Caucasus. And Armenia, the Christian country, is surrounded by pretty much on every side by Muslims. Uh, Countries are lining up quickly. Uh, The big players, Azerbaijan is being supported by Turkey and Pakistan. Armenia is being supported by Russia and India. Serious global economic considerations with this. Lots of pipelines of oil and natural gas flow through the region. And then in the backdrop of all this, Turkey's lira and the Russian ruble, they're in free fall and they're being devalued to historical levels relative to the U.S. dollar. So the cost of basic goods, you know, food, clothes, medicine, they are exploding across the region. You know, Russia, uh, Georgia, Turkey, Iran, Armenia, Azerbaijan, all these countries are experiencing significant inflation because of United States economic sanctions. And that's where, you know, the United States, um, historically they've supported the Muslim country, Azerbaijan. So they sell military equipment to Azerbaijan. Um, and Russia supports the Christian country by and large sends most of their, they they will sell their military goods. I was reading an article, Russia sells their military goods at a cheaper rate to Armenia than what they sell theirs to Azerbaijan. So, I mean, Russia is selling arms to both countries, but they're giving the Armenians a better deal. And as I was writing this, you had the Pope coming out, calling for world peace. Trump's looking at it very strongly. He's (laughs) talking about it. That's all he said. We're looking at it very strongly, very strongly. Um, And then the UN, the head of the UN, calling for peace, all the hostilities to come to an end. We need to sit down, go to the table, negotiation. So, which brings us, you know, to scripture. And we're going to, you know, potential impact with Ezekiel 38 verses 1 through 3. You know, ultimately this culminates in the Russia and friends invasion of Israel from the north and potentially some implications here. 
we'll read the text. Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Also, in verse 6, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth the Garma, from the utter most parts of the north with all his hordes, many people are with you. So I'm going to jump back up there to verses 1 through 3. Gog, the leader of the land of Magog. So that that's the what would, you know, we'll look at this down below. Um, the verse above from Ezekiel 38 reads as follows. So Gog, a political leader of Magog, which is modern day Russia, is the leader of Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Beth the Garma, which is essentially modern-day Turkey in the area above in dispute. So when you look at all those ancient names and where those folks settled when they came out of the ark and split off from the Table of Nations, Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Beth the Garma are pretty much the land between the seas uh, and south of there. So Turkey all the way east to... um, to the Caspian Sea. So you have Armenia, that'd be part of it, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and then Russia's right up there too, Turkey. So all those, that's those ancient names. They were brothers when when they were were scattered. Um, So, you know, it it would appear that Russia and Turkey will need to get on the same page politically. And it would seem that way, but maybe not. Who knows? And this also marks the third regional conflict where Turkey and Russia, you know, appear to be at odds. You know, they're both in Syria. They're not on the same page. They're both in Libya, not on the same page. And now they're in this region uh, between Armenia and Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, if you want to break this down and look at who is Magog, ancient Magog, this is a post I wrote for GodInANutshell.com breaks it down, the history of who Magog is, the Scythians, and those are the ancient names for what is modern-day Russia. I mean, even Russians today identify as Scythians. So there's really not, um, I don't think there's a lot of controversy in that, although there is a lot of controversy in that. But, you know, Russians identify as Scythians. That was the Greek name. Or translated Magogians. Uh, Also, GodInANutshell.com. Who are Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, Beth, the Garma? That's modern day Turkey. And just reading the the text up above, it would appear somebody is going to coalesce power, would be Gog, before the invasion of Israel takes place. So they all need to get on the same page. And this this group of people will be under the leadership of Gog. And that's that's both. I mean, everybody there included in this region, Russia and Turkey. And Iran is going to be part of it. And then Libya, which again, both every, every place these two guys are together, these two countries are together, that there is prophetic implications as it relates to Ezekiel 38 and 39, this coalition of nations who's going to come against Israel. So they need to consolidate their, um, their base, if you will, and get on the same page or though it would, you know, stand to reason. Now, of course you could have just decide to go it and we're going to do this, but it, it seems reasonable. And, and this is a big if, and I caution with a very big if, if this is a pivotal event that brings this about to where Russia and these folks in Turkey and the Caucasus all get on the same page. And that, that again seems reasonable because Russia is going to, use that that landmass that uh that area to bring more troops and military hardware down into the middle east it would be a lot easier if they could just drive their stuff right through there without any interruption or any kind of political any difficulty in that sense um and the one thing i would caution recent history has definitely taught me not to be dogmatic and certainty about prophecy being fulfilled um there have been and will continue to be many twists and turns. And my thing is just be watchful, be alert. Scripture tells us how it ends, but it doesn't always tell us how we get there. And and especially with, with Erdogan in Turkey, I mean, there have been several times you're like, Oh, (laughs) this guy's done. And he keeps showing back up and he keeps injecting himself. He's about died a couple of times. He's been defeated militarily. It would appear 
survived a coup, but yet he's still there. And it, you know, it makes you wonder what, what the future holds. We know what scripture says. They are, they are going to get together. These countries are going to get together and invade Israel, but they're not all together. They're all in the same regions. Something's got to unite these groups of a single mind and a single purpose. And it, could stand to be. I mean, it's obviously economic. We know that Ezekiel 38 tells us that. And with both of these countries are getting, their currencies are getting crushed. Their people are experiencing inflation and Israel's on the verge of taking away business with gas sales to the, to Europe. So there's clearly going to be an economic reason why they all get together. Um, to, to go take Israel's natural resources, their gas. So keep an eye on it. I suspect this will be interesting. It's 2020, so of course something's going to happen. Uh, we just haven't gotten out of anything calmly or peacefully this year. And again, if this is the time, this is birth pang time, these things will continue to increase and become stronger as the time gets closer. So are we there? I don't know. But 2020s, Hadn't really taken a break and big ticket news items all the time, every day you turn around. So if you are interested, please uh, feel free to share with others, paulthepoke.com. You can sign up, get notification, type your email address in. We'll send you out notification every time we post something. News flow has been crazy now for going about the last oh, two, three weeks and frankly picked up quite a bit in 2020 as a general rule. So, um, appreciate y'all following along. Um, take it easy. Talk to you later. Bye.